So as everyone in this room knows, uh, white fly viruses have been a significant problem in Georgia recently, um, especially in the fall. So we went and conducted uh, multiple variety trials and multiple crops to find a solution of which crops and varieties would perform best in Georgia fall production. I did this work also with um, tomatoes, and Babesh has done it extensively with green beans in the past, but today I'm going to focus on different cucurbit species, specifically cucumber, zucchini, yellow squash, and winter squash. I wanted to test a wide um, range of genetic material. So for cu cucumber, um, we tested pickling, the one with the pea, compared to slicing, which is what's typically grown for fresh market consumption. Um, tested for zucchini. In summer squash, uh, we had yellow and zucchini. It was in part by accident because um, we got packets with no pictures and it said hybrid squash. But this was a, an opportunity for us to compare zucchini and yellow squash head to head in the same trial. So the Z are the zucchini varieties in summer squash, and the CN is crook neck, and the rest are yellow straight necked. For winter squash, um, we had multiple types of squash and different species. Um, there was cucurbit pipo and cucurbit machata. Um, the A is acorn, K kabosha, calabasa, butternut, hubbard. So to start off, uh, whitefly pressure was very high this fall. We were getting up to 600 um, whitefly adults per leaf. Um, <clears throat> doing a variety trial, I was afraid I wouldn't get any virus, but um, we were inundated with whitefly. Our plants were wilted just from uh, whitefly feeding in the beginning until we moved to um, multiple sprays per week with a, a drop sprayer. Um, you can see there was a, a crop preference for feeding, but everything had whitefly, and um, after a few weeks of uh, whitefly feeding, the virus came in. So besides uh, virus, we were seeing other things uh, related to whitefly, such as silvering. And it was uh, good varietal differences. You can see in the top left, uh, that's the break between plots. You can see on the left, um, white leaves on the right, green leaves. Uh, this is a physiological response to white fly feeding. And so we did a um, silver uh, ranking one to five, five being green, one being completely white. Um, we also saw downy mildew in the fall. We took one to five ratings, again five being the most tolerant and one being the most susceptible. So getting right into um, the virus quanti quantification. This was done by uh, Dr. Sudeet Bag in his lab. There were two main viruses that we saw, but all the samples, um, for the most part, were multiple viruses in the same sample virus complex. Uh, the two I'm going to focus on is cucurbit leaf crumple virus, and then also um, cucurbit uh, yellow stunting disorder virus. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I first saw this data and I thought, wow, there's no difference. What am I going to say? But if you, the bars look pretty much uh, similar levels, but what you need to look at is um, the order of magnitude. As you can see, the cucumber is 10 to the second. Uh, zucchini is 1 times 10 to the 5. Squash is 2 times 10 to the 5 increments. So although the bars might be the same levels, the amount of virus was um, least in the cucumber, then zucchini, followed by yellow squash. Uh, winter squash was interesting. Some varieties had the most and some didn't have any. Um, the solid bars, the symptomatic leaves, and um, the checkered bar was asymptomatic leaves. So you can see that there was virus detected in um, leaves that weren't showing symptoms. And then also um, you can see that there is variability within varieties for each crop. So, um, you know, definitely, again, cucumber and zucchini uh, held up the best to um, crumple leaf virus. 
So here's the cucurbit yellow stunting disorder. Again, I have them in order. Um, cucumber, followed by winter squash, followed by zucchini and yellow squash um, being the most susceptible. So now I'm going to go into um, each crop separately, uh, show you pictures of the symptoms in the foliage, in the fruit, and uh, then end with the yield results. So cucumber, it looked pretty good. For the most part, it was a green plant. The new growth um, looked fine. Mainly we were seeing the yellowing in the older growth, um, but these were um, still very productive. In the fruit, um, we didn't see any um, bumps or um, discoloration. The only um, <clears throat> calls we got were bad shapes from pollination. And as you can see, you can see the, um, excuse me, the pickling variety in, in the bottom right, and you can see um, some differences in, in length as well. For cucumber, yellow squash, and zucchini, I just took counts because um, they're harvested at an immature stage and the weight would increase as, as they mature. For the winter squash, since they're harvested at a mature stage, we took weights as well. So you can see as, as far as number of fruit, the pickling variety Supremo had the most fruit. Uh, this could be expected, they, they're smaller fruit. Uh, there was no difference in the slicing varieties for marketable yield. Uh, Bristol Cobra and Raceway had less unmarketable count. So the, these uh, numbers are number of fruit per plot and each plot was 10 plants. So you can see um, you know, roughly seven marketable fruit, for example, for Supremo per plant. The length, uh, there was differences. The pickling variety was, was shorter, obviously. Uh, raceway was the longest. So if you're looking for a longer cucumber, that'd be a good option. The next best performer for the, uh, in our cucurbit study was zucchini. As you can see, the field looks nice and healthy and green, and it's very productive. If you look closer, you can find um, virus symptoms. Um, in the middle, you can see, even though it has crumple virus, that fruit underneath will be marketable. Um, on the right, you have a complex and um, I believe that's some PEPO virus as well, so multiple viruses. On the zucchini, we did see uh, different virus symptoms in the fruit to call and recorded this as well. But again, um, you know, it had nice marketable fruit even with all the pressure. For white fly counts, there was no difference between species. But it seems like the Everglade tended to have less than the uh, spineless varieties. Silver tolerance was excellent with Everglade. Downy tolerance was excellent, and it had the highest marketable yield with zero virus fruits. So in a zucchini trial, I would recommend Everglade based on our results. Next is the summer squash. Um, as you can see here, it's more severe, um, both the crumpling and the yellowing, and it affected uh, yields to a greater degree. And we also got some uh, downy as well. So here's the virus symptoms on, on the fruit. There's your, yellow, your uh, straight neck and your crook neck, marketable fruit. In this um, trial, if you remember, we compared it to some zucchini. And um, <clears throat> here I'm going to show you all the varieties together and then I'm going to break it out by uh, zucchini versus yellow squash. So for silver tolerance, the CN196 laser and gold prize had the best silver tolerance. Again, five was, was the best. Um, for downy to tolerance, the zucchini did better with Fortress and 477 being at the top. The top three performers for marketable yield were Fortress, 477, and 196, uh, Crookneck. One thing to note here is that the Fortress um, had actually downy tolerance, and they're actually um, claiming that, but it had a um, higher number of virus fruits, but it didn't seem to affect the marketable yield compared to the others. 
So in this trial, um, you know, I recommend the top three to Fortress 477 and 196. So this is zucchini compared to yellow. Zucchini had better downy tolerance. Yellow squash had better silver tolerance. Zucchini had more marketable fruit and less, or, and they both um, had a similar virus fruit. So out of this, I would recommend zucchini because um, downy mildew doesn't go away once you get it. So whereas silver, if silver leaf, if you could control the insects um, or the insects subside later in the season, the new growth won't have silvering. And also just um, the fact that it had more marketable yield. Our winter squash um, had the, the most variability and, and the most interesting results and um, perhaps gives you a new opportunity for production in Georgia because you know you guys are already growing cucumbers and yellow squash and zucchini. So you can see um, on the picture on the right, the plants on the left are um, butternut squash. They look pretty green, but um, in many of the others you see silvering and yellowing. And here's the, the different um, virus symptoms we saw with yellowing, curling, and, and mottling. Something that was interesting in this trial, and, and I ran the statistics, and it, it is statistic, statistically different. Um, we were getting dead plants. Um, we had these plants sa sampled, and we found uh, vine borers for the dead plants. So that could be a, a challenge as well. Spoiler alert, the uh, butternut did the best as far as virus and yield. Um, the one on the left is Atlas and the one on the right is Waltham. Uh, most of the calls for Waltham were because the fruit were smaller, uh, some of them being as small as, as pears. The Atlas, the biggest flaw, had you know good production, good size, was the split fruit. So I think this is an opportunity where um, for the future we could do more um, butternut and, and tropical pumpkin machado varieties or species to find the best one that's suited for Georgia. For the, so going into the results, and you probably figured out, I didn't mention it, but it's a stoplight where green's good and red's bad. Um, the Golden Hubbard had the most dead plants. So that's out of 10 plants, 7.5 were, were wilted or dead. Um, so it was really preferred by, by the um, vine borer. Similar levels of white flies between all, um, all the varieties. Waltham butternut had the best silvering, f followed by Atlas butternut, followed by La Estrella calabasa tropical pumpkin. The Atlas and the Waltham and the Sweet Mama Kabosha had the best downy resistance, followed by the La Estrella. The Atlas and the Waltham butternut had the highest number, number of fruit count, while the Atlas and the La Estrella had the highest weights. Um, I don't have pictures. The La Estrella looks good, but it it was small. Um, you know, I, I would it it, sh it should have been bigger. So that's why I, in this slide I put it as a caution. So this is my overall recommendations um, as far as what crops to grow. I recommend cucumber, zucchini, and butternut squash if we could find a, a variety adapted to Georgia. Um, it had good overall growth and production. Um, the pickling cucumber did well. The top three slicers were Speedway, Dasher, and Bristol. Raceway had the longest fruit. For zucchini, Fortress, and Everglade, um, Fortress had the best downy resistance, but some of the fruit had virus symptoms, but in its trial it had the highest yields. The Everglade had the um, highest yield in its trial, and it had zero cull fruits due to virus which I believe is a uh, virus that was affecting the fruit. 
Um, caution to yellow squash compared to zucchini. If I had to pick a summer squash, um, I would go with the zucchini. And the La Estrella showed good um, plant and resistance, but had small fruit, so um, I'd caution there. I do not recommend the other winter squash. I wasn't sure about time, <laughs> so we also did this with um, tomato, cantaloupe, and pumpkin. I would not recommend pumpkin, um, downy mildew, virus, small fruit, virus fruit. Um, cantaloupe we planted late, so I don't know if they just do poorly or if it was our fault, so we'll um, repeat that. Tomato, we did several trials. Okay, last slide. Um, it seems that the um, Grand Marshal and the Jolene were the top performers. And then, like I mentioned, Babesh has been doing uh, green bean screening for several years, and he recommends the PV857 prevail and momentum in the fall. So I'd just like to wrap up and say thank you to my crew, my grad student, Nirmala, this is her project, um, my technician, Bob, and all my student workers, and Dr. Sudeep Bag for doing all the virus quantification. And I'd like to thank uh, the Vegetable Commodity Commission, USDA, and Hatch uh, grants for funding. Thank you. Oh no. The thing didn't it didn't transition right. Oh. Okay, never mind it did because you were talking about the, Was there was there supposed to be a slide in between those? I don't know. No, that's it. Oh, okay. That's it. I was talking about the other crops. I, I didn't show the data because uh, I only had twenty five minutes and I, I don't know if I six was too many. I just went with four bright four Questions for Dr. McAvoy?